Mr. Lu, the stock market is going so high right now. I want to take profit, but I don't know when to do it, how to do it, and then later how to go back into it. So what should I do? Mr. Lu, we keep talking about rebalancing. What should I do? Well, ladies and gentlemen, today is the day that I'm finally going to talk about profit taking and rebalancing. There is a science to it that I would like to share with everybody. And let's go get on with the video, shall we? To start off, let's uh, take a look at our disclaimers. Please read it. And let's go. So first of all, in order to talk about rebalancing and profit taking, we must first understand this concept called diversification. What on earth is diversification? We roughly know, but let me just put it down onto slides so that you can understand. And then I slowly lead into rebalancing and slowly lead into profit taking. This is an art that I think everybody should know how to do it. Simplistically speaking, as an investor, you should have a portfolio classified by three buckets. There's stocks, there's bonds, and there's cash. Someone will say that, oh, Mr. Lu, there are so much more assets available. I have my property, I have my CPF, my fixed D, and so on. Yes, that's true. A lot of us have uh, many assets, including futures, bonds, cryptos, options, and all sorts of stuff. But let's simplify by just looking at three assets, and the principle applies uh, also to multi-assets. So let's go back to a simple way of looking at it. Three assets, bonds, stocks, and cash. Why do we need to do rebalancing, why do we need to do diversification? This is why. First of all, let's look at stocks. Stocks is very nice. The returns are very nice. And in my experience, stocks can give you anything between 8 to 15%, depending on which index that you invest in. But unfortunately, the same uh, nice angel that gives you your 8 to 15% return can be a monster when the market crash. And I've seen market crash and experience a huge drawdown of up to 50, 60% returns uh, before. So this kind of huge drawdown is very, very painful. And not many people can, uh, can withstand this kind of drawdown. Now, on the other hand, bonds are very nice asset. They give a nice small little return, but it has very little volatility. And you know, this is what we call low risk, low return uh, asset. And third is cash. Everybody knows what is cold hard cash and it gives you very miserable return, almost no return, but it has got no volatility. And when you combine three of them together, you actually create a very nice diverse asset. And, and conceptually, you know, your returns will, will somewhat be lesser compared to what you hold. If you hold in an in a all stock asset, but your volatility gets cushioned off by a lot. And I'll show that towards the end of the video. So how do we do rebalancing? This is an art that everybody needs to have. First of all, you must first decide how much to put in your buckets of assets. So let's simply speaking, ignore the cash asset. Let's just completely ignore that. I don't want to look at that. It doesn't mean I don't hold cash, but just ignore that. I only look at the two asset portfolio, which is stocks and bonds. And I've decided for myself, my age profile, my risk profile, that you know, 60, 40 is the best. You could do 50, 50 or 70, 30, no right or wrong, but that's really up to your risk profile. And with this, uh, this 60, 40, I assume, assume that we actually have a $10,000 uh, to invest in both. And I spread them out into 60, 40 uh, into stocks and bonds. The next thing we need to decide is when to do rebalancing. And you could do rebalancing based on a time trigger, meaning that at the end of every month, you know, I decide you know, to do a rebalancing back to 60, 40, and it could be a quarter, half yearly or annually. Some of my stock portfolio, I do it annually. Some of, I look at quarterly and some are based on other triggers, which I'll explain to you shortly. So assuming that we experience a strong bull run like what we are seeing right now, our stock portfolio rise phenomenally right now uh, to $12,000. And, and holding bonds constant, my portfolio right now, instead of a $10,000 portfolio, has risen to $16,000. But the ratio has gone out of whack to 66% versus 33% in bonds. So this is where I hit a time trigger, end of the month or end of quarter, I've decided to do a rebalancing. I sell stocks, okay, and transfer $2,400 into bonds. 
by doing these sell stocks and buy bonds, I'm effectively selling off the, the, the asset that's appreciated a lot and buying the assets that is underappreciated or not even appreciated. So this is like, you know, you sell high and buy cheap uh, strategy. And this now rebalances the ratio in a 60-40, back to the ideal one. And I'll do it periodically again, every every month or every quarter or every half year, or every every year or so. So, so a time period is a very interesting trigger, but it's not the only trigger that you can use. You could also decide to, to have a trigger based on a ratio condition. So a very common way is that, you know, right now I'm based my ratio on 60-40, but let's say from 60-40, the, the ratio right now has, has adjusted to 50-50. Now it could be any time, you know, it could be done in uh, within the month or it could be done uh, within, you know, two months or one quarter or whatever the time is. But whenever I hit this trigger, I initiate a rebalance. Let's say on the start of the month, it was 60-40, and then towards the third week of the month, it has reached 50-50. I could rebalance it uh, to, to make it back to the 60-40. The act of rebalancing that I've explained earlier effectively sells down the, the rising assets and buy the assets that is underappreciated. So this is, uh, it is in abstractly speaking, a kind of profit-taking. And I'll explain that to you later again. So what if we want to include cash into this uh, portfolio? Let's look at it, shall we? First, we also need to decide how much to put into the three buckets. And in this example of $10,000 for investments, I split the ratio into 50, 30, 20. No right or wrong on these ratios. It should be a ratio that you are, you are emotionally comfortable with. And let's say I've decided to pick 50, 30, 20 into stocks, bonds, and cash respectively. This I will adjust periodically, let's say once every month. Then we got to decide when to do rebalancing. And I've decided that, you know, I could do it once a month or once a quarter. And when I hit the time frame, let's say the ratio of, of 50, 30, 20 now becomes out of whack because there's a terrible stock market crash. Now, so in this terrible stock market crash, I lost a lot of stocks, uh, probably by about half of it, but my bonds and cash remain intact. So my total portfolio size is left with 7,500. In this instance, when the time trigger is hit, I rebalance it by selling my bonds and buying stocks. So I sell uh, $750 worth of bonds and buy $750 worth of stocks. Similarly, I, I use up $500 of cash and put in the stocks as well. So this simple okay, art of rebalancing now recalibrated my ratio back to a 50, 30, 20. While the portfolio is now smaller at 7,500, I've now recalibrated back to ratio. The act of rebalancing actually forces me to buy the asset that has crashed and sell the asset that is relatively more expensive. So this is rebalancing. The question right now is, Mr. Lu, you talk so much about rebalancing. Why on earth do we need to do rebalancing? Well, this is why. If you were to look at this graph here, it will explain to you why. So if you look at the green line, the green line represents the S&P 500. The S&P 500, if you put $10,000 inside over a period of 20 years, okay? And these are actual data, real data based on the uh, uh, S&P 500 over the last 20 years, you actually gain about 10.5%. Very nice return, okay? In fact, at the end of the 20 years, your $10,000 become $80,000. Damn shook, right? But unfortunately, along this 20-year period, the worst, the worst time you actually get a maximum uh, stock market fall on your portfolio of 50%. In fact, almost 51%. And that's very painful. Very few of you can take a blow of a 50% drawdown in your portfolio. So this portfolio of 50% drawdown will cause you to react in the wrong way. Let's say we take a look at a 60-40 ratio, okay? And if you take a 60-40 ratio between stocks and bonds, the returns fall to 8.6% or so. But the maximum drawdown falls by half by half, you know, and that's a lot more comfortable and more tahanable, okay? And and that's something that, you know, you, are, you should be willing to trade off. You trade off some returns in exchange for, 
for a maximum drawdown, a uh, 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 cut down. So this actually help your portfolio to be easier to manage, nicer to manage. So let's say you take a cash position in your portfolio and now becomes 50, 30, 20, which is 50% stocks, 30% bonds and 20% cash. Look at what the return is. The returns have, will fall by about one more percent to 7%, which is still very decent, but your maximum drawdown is now maximum of 20%. Very much manageable. So actually, the whole art of rebalancing you know, is basically helping you to still enjoy a decent rate of return every year without suffering the terrible maximum drawdown. In short, rebalancing is a very scientific way of doing profit taking. And if you were to backtest it over the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years, it will prove that it will continue to help you enjoy very decent returns without suffering the terrible uh, drawdown and volatility uh, that you know that you would otherwise hold in a pure stock portfolio. The practice of rebalancing forces you to buy things cheap and sell things when they are expensive and recalibrate among all your portfolios. There is no right or wrong to the ratios, but the most important thing is to be disciplined in rebalancing. Rebalancing is conceptually simple to understand, executionally very difficult to do. Why is it so? Because human nature likes to see their assets that are rising. When you rebalance, it basically means that you, you force yourself to sell the asset that's rising. And you, when you want to sell asset rising, your mind will be thinking that asset should go up more. Why am I selling it? And when you force yourself to buy the asset that is that is cheaper. The asset is probably a you know boring asset, dead asset, you know, or you know seemingly you know unexciting asset. And you ask yourself, why am I selling something that's great to buy something that's cheap? But if you were to discipline yourself to this to this uh, rebalancing, you will find that you know over the long run, your 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 volatility is much easier to manage, and you will enjoy profit taking and you wouldn't suffer those terrible drawdowns that I've actually explained to you. Rebalancing is a very critical part of stock investment. And I use this uh, session to explain to you in a simple way. It requires some training to achieve the investment muscles to learn how to do it. So start something small first, and then you know over time, build it to something into your main portfolio. I'm happy to take your questions in the uh, YouTube comments, or we can discuss it in our Telegram channel, uh, Lu1965, where we have 30,000 people over there, and most importantly, has a, a team of community experts you know, at your service. I would like to thank you for watching this, and remember, hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in a day or two. Bye-bye.